I'm Benita Porter, and I'm here to share some information on how to take notes. All you need for taking notes is a piece of paper and a pencil or pen. Researchers have found out that people who take notes directly into a computer don't remember them as well as people who take notes on paper. My advice is to get a spiral notebook so all your notes stay in the same notebook for each class. Some teachers ask you to have a three ring binder for your notes. That's cool. Put a bunch of line paper into those three ring binders, carry them around. The reason that computers are not good, there's several. They don't aid memory as well as handwritten notes. If you do something immediately with the information you've received, condensing it to put into notes, um, reordering it, that kind of thing, you remember it longer. Also, it distracts you from what the teacher is doing. So you may miss something that'll be on a test later. Distractions are big with computers. You can be getting new messages. You can be looking up things that interest you, that kind of thing while the teacher is speaking. And you may miss the cues that say, this is going to be on a test and you need to remember it. Take notes, even on discussions. It'll make your answers on essay tests especially much easier to write. Reasons for taking notes. It helps you focus on the speaker. It helps you remember what is being said about certain things. And if you take notes on your readings, you can have your questions written in your notes and you can an write the answers right there if they come up during a lecture. It's a great study tool to get ready for tests. Read those notes, rewrite them if you must. After you've written them, type them into a computer so they're in good order, but keep the notes. It also helps in your understanding if you take notes on discussions in class, because you can divide the paper in two, put the pros on one side, the cons on the other, and um, help remember things better that way. There's many styles of taking notes. The styles include columns. You can multiply the columns and make them into tables so that you can have animals and then have lists of things that compare the animals as you go across the table. Like domestic cats, their habitat is uh, land. What do they eat? A varied diet. So you can put tables in there and tables are really good for comparing one thing to another. There's outlines, which are linear. You start at the top with your title and then put the key concept, the main ideas that you're thinking about that day, like the main idea would be compare presidencies of Trump and Obama. Supporting evidence goes below that and it should be comparative. Outlines are great if you need to write an essay. So learn the outline form because when you get that paper to write the essay on, you can put a five or six point outline at the top and keep to that, write your answer and it's very well organized that way and the teacher will appreciate that. And if your handwriting is good, she'll appreciate that even more. Um, in the real world, outside after you get out of school, outlines are good if you're putting together a business proposal or if you're meeting uh, in, in meetings and you need to keep notes on what the decisions for that meeting are. Um, or if you're building evidence for projects that you hope to do in the future to hand to your boss. There's also concept maps that look like speaking bubbles. In the center, you have, going back to our animals example, you have animals of the earth, in the center, and then you have bubbles coming out from there with arrows or lines. So you have amphibians, fish, 
birds, mammals around that central animals of earth. And then you go out from those and start making lines of sub ideas from each of those outer bubbles or make smaller bubbles. Some people use colors to make sure that the central idea is always one color and the subordinate ideas around the edge are a different color. That works. The concept maps show relationships of things to one another. Some of those bubbles, like with amphibians, they'll live both in water and land. So you have two arrows going out from that one. I also mentioned columns before for taking notes in meetings. It's good to turn the lined paper on its side and do three columns so you can have the person speaking their idea and what the decision was. You can have a column just for discussion. Like if you're applying to college, you can have a list of colleges on one column, your major that you would like to apply for in that college, and the response from your counselor um, about what's going to happen with those ideas. When you have these notes, it's good to compare them with another student's notes. So find somebody else in your classroom that makes good notes, see what they thought were, was important, see what they missed, they can see what you thought was important and possibly what you missed. Talk about why these things were important. Try to recall how many times the teacher repeated herself in the lecture, because that's almost, uh, that is a clue that this item will be on a test. The mind is a funny thing. It has to uh, hear the same thing over and over and over to put it into long-term memory. When you're taking notes, you can't write as fast as a person speaks. So most of you people have tried texting and there's a lot of abbreviations that are used in texting. Use those same abbreviations in your notes. If you know what they mean and you can recall what they mean, put them in your notes. Use symbols, mathematical symbols, asterisks, ampersands, those and signs, um, the little A with the circle around it. I use that for about as well as at. You put big question marks if this is something you think you got wrong or you have a question about. So you can go and ask your teacher the next day. When you're taking notes in while you're reading, Skip a line between each thing that you write. Restrict each line to three to five words. By adding that extra line in between, you have space to write in extra information from your teacher's lecture. Mm -hmm.